Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Now, I've been asked several times where the extra harmonics were coming from in the AM double sideband and single sideband spectrum in my single sideband how does it do that video. Now, here's a link to that original video up in the corner and down in the description. At the time I made the video, I hadn't really thought through it all, so I had no real viable explanation for them. Well, I'm going to explain why they exist in this video. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. First, what should a perfect spectrum look like? Well, let's begin by answering the question, if everything was perfect, what should the spectrum for an AM or double sideband suppressed carrier signal look like? First, the only difference between these two is that the double sideband suppressed carrier is missing the carrier in its spectrum. A single sideband signal is missing both the carrier and one of the sidebands. So, by describing the spectrum of the theoretically perfect AM signal, we cover all three. We just have to subtract a few things to cover the other two. Now, we remember from the other video that an AM modulator is a multiplier. And then we have the carrier defined in the time domain by A sub C, that is the amplitude of the carrier signal, times the cosine of 2 times pi times the frequency of the carrier signal times t. And then we have the modulating signal defined in the time domain by a sub m, which is the amplitude of the modulating signal, times the cosine of 2 times pi times the frequency of the modulating signal times t. If we go through all the math, we come up with the following time domain equation for an amplitude modulated signal. We have the amplitude of the AM modulated signal at any time t is equal to the amplitude of the carrier signal times the cosine of 2 times pi times t times the frequency of the carrier signal plus the amplitude of the carrier signal times the amplitude of the modulating signal divided by 2 times this big quantity. We have the cosine of 2 times pi times t times the frequency of the carrier minus the frequency of the modulated signal plus the cosine of 2 times pi times t times the frequency of the carrier plus the frequency of the modulating signal. This first term, the a sub c times the cosine of 2 times pi times t times f sub c, that is the carrier signal. The second term represents two distinct sidebands. These are located at the carrier frequency minus the modulation frequency and the carrier frequency plus the modulation frequency. So, in a perfect world with a perfect 10 megahertz carrier source and a perfect 2 kilohertz audio source and a perfect modulator, we would expect to have a single pip at 10 megahertz for the carrier and a pip at 9.998 megahertz and a pip at 10.002 megahertz. And this is all we would expect to see. So the question is, what went wrong? Well, the answer is nonlinearity went wrong. Oh, what do I mean by that? Well, nothing is perfect. Oscillators are not perfect. Amplifiers are not perfect. Modulators are not perfect. Loads are not perfect. 
if we have an imperfect oscillator feeding a perfect amplifier and all the rest, we still have an imperfect signal. If we have a perfect oscillator feeding an imperfect amplifier, we still have an imperfect signal. So, what do I mean by nonlinearity? Well, let me give you a simple example. Suppose we have an amplifier with a reported gain of 10. We feed a nice, perfect signal into this amplifier. Now, we carefully watch the output voltage as the input voltage varies. If, at any point, the output voltage isn't exactly 10 times the input voltage, then we have a nonlinearity. But what do nonlinearities do? Well, in short, nonlinearities introduce harmonics into the signal subjected to them. We call this harmonic distortion when it is applied to signal sources and amplifiers. There are subsets of this, like crossover distortion, where the nonlinearity occurs as the signal passes from a positive voltage to a negative voltage, or vice versa. If the issue were harmonic distortion in the carrier signal itself, then we would expect to see harmonics at multiples of the carrier frequency, depending on the cause or type of nonlinearity. It could only be maybe even harmonics, or maybe it would show up as only ha odd harmonics, or you might see both odd and even harmonics, again, depending upon the cause or the type of the nonlinearity. I had one such thing going on with my first transmitter. It was a very, very old homebrew transmitter that I bought for $8 at a garage sale. I discovered the hard way that it was transmitting on both 3725 kilohertz and 7450 kilohertz simultaneously. The official observer for the FCC let me know by way of a pink slip I received in the mail. If our audio source was experiencing harmonic distortion, then we can expect to see extra harmonics in the modulated signal, much like we saw in the original video. If the modulator itself had linearity problems, then the symptoms would be very similar to the faulty audio source. In fact, the equation that I used in the video for the mixer is the equation used to describe a nonlinear mixer and its harmonic effects. This is often called intermodulation. So there it is, short and sweet. This is why we saw those extra harmonics in the spectrum of our modulated signals. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.